Today we are going to talk about automation with my buddy Toby here at Lang and specifically the Robotrex automation cell that we're standing in front of here and the one over on the other side, the significance, the flexibility, the precision, everything that goes along with it to build you confidence so you can implement these same systems into your facility. Toby, let's talk about automation. Let's start with how simple this system is to utilize from day one, putting it into a facility and how easy someone can adapt to learning it. You say day one, it's the simplicity of the Robotrex system. We can attach it to every machine tool, no matter if it's a brand new one or if it's an older one. The Robotrex system helps to extend the lifetime of an older machine tool, for instance. We can attach it to almost every machine tool because we can add automatic side windows, the air comes from our system, so the machine doesn't necessarily have to have a pneumatic rotary joint, for instance. The air comes from our system and also the interface, the communication with the machine is very easy. Basically, we need only one M code for making the machine tool running with the automation system. I'd like to echo what Toby said just real quickly. Any machine tool, that means if you have one that's sitting in your facility for a long time, that's almost, say, possibly even outdated, you can upgrade with an automated system. So any machine tool out there with an ease of adaptation because Lang is doing the work for you, even at their facility before they get to your facility and then at your facility. And I'd also like to echo again, side loading, front loading. But now let's talk about this screen that's behind us right here. We don't have to actually touch it at this moment, but just in general, you told me a story about how easy it is for someone to learn this. It is, it's a second benefit, it's simplicity. It's very easy to operate for everybody, and I mean literally everybody. You don't have to be an engineer, you don't have to be a technician. Very unskilled people after maybe one hour of training can operate the system. They can load the trolleys with work pieces, they can just press start on the screen, they can stop the system, they can interrupt it, very easy. We need that ease when we're implementing something quickly. Now, there's a lot of different systems out there, right? Now, we're loading and unloading the Lang vices, but a lot of systems load and unload parts. What are the advantages to loading vices? To load vices, basically can say the device doesn't care which type of part is in it. It can be a cubic part, it can be a round part, it can be a strangely shaped part. The gripper just uh, doesn't care. It just picks up the device, no matter what type of, of device is in it. If you load the part into the machine tool, you have to adjust the gripper, you have to make bigger grippers, smaller grippers, you have to have a big range of different grippers. And change over this gripper takes a lot of time. Changing over devices with the, with the parts, for instance here, like 42 parts on one trolley, maybe takes 10 minutes to make a complete setup and make the system running again. I think a lot of people, when they see a cell like this, they instantly think, I need to have hundreds of parts because it needs to repeat over and over again. And if I have lower batch sizes, then I need to think about a cobot. But we're learning right now for the audience that that's not necessarily the case. With these trolleys, with these vices, I can load multiple programs at low batch sizes and have the same automation you might have with a cobot system. Absolutely. You see here fully loaded trolleys, but at the same time you could also just put five or ten vices on one trolley. There are sensors in the robot recognizing the trolleys and it's just picking the vices which are loaded with work pieces. can also be easily adjusted with the screen. Alternatively, we can also run up to 250 different programs if you have a corresponding automation interface in the machine tool. So the system is able to do that. Now let's talk a little bit about the trolley itself. We're just pulling them out, putting them in. So let's say we have a runtime. Just as an example, guys, this changes all the time. But let's say we have a runtime of eight hours on one trolley. That means we need no human interference for that eight hours while it runs. When that eight hours is up, we pull it out, load in a new trolley, and we go again. Is that how the system works? Exactly, that, that's the case. We work one shift, for instance, 50 minutes before they end their job at a day, they take out the trolleys, fill it up with new work pieces, put it in, and depending on the cycle time, it runs eight to 10 hours or whatever. And then, again, new changeover within 10 minutes and make the system running again. I think this is gonna be an obvious question, but I have to ask it, because I'm sure the audience is, is curious as well. When I load and unload this trolley, is it almost like plugging in a switch and then it's ready to it, go? It's what we call plug and play. There's a kind of uh, docking station on the floor which positions, and positions the trolley automatically and also pulls it in automatically. It's really, again, very easy. Just pull it out by hand, pull it back, very easy and quickly. So now that we've talked about being able to plug and play, right, that also kind of leads me into overall precision. 
So when we're loading and unloading this vi these vices, we're talking microns of precision, right? We're talking about microns. It comes from our zero-point clamping system, QuickPoint, which is pneumatically automated by the robot, and the vices are um, positioned with a repeat accuracy of five microns on the machine tool trolley. And this can be combined with a lot of the other really incredible accessories that you guys have, like your stamping system. So now I'm getting the rigidity as well to go with the automation, to go with the flexibility. It really is a one-stop shop when you're working with Laying Technic, aren't we? Absolutely, of course. Yeah. We have different jaw options here. For the first operation, for raw materials, you're using usually the stamping technology. For the second up, you have a second set of vices or second set of jaws where we have some soft jaws where it's just to, to, for the second up, machining the second up. It's the same job on the same machine. That makes perfect sense, Toby. Thank you so much for sharing You're this. You're welcome. For those of you watching, I mean, this is second and third shift, right? How many of us right now are fighting to find people who want to work second and third shift? And how come sometimes when this happens, even the quality starts to dissipate through the night? I've seen it too many times. With this, we can run through the night, through the weekends, get the parts done, make more money. So by investing in these systems, ultimately, they're paying for themselves and making us money in the long run. Absolutely. Almost That's the case. right away. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have, my friends. Thank you all for watching, Toby. Thank you for sharing how this Thank system works.